Hello everybody, Mike Friedman from Audio Insider Technology Design, aka your friendly neighborhood technology elf with another episode of 30 Days of Technology. And today we're gonna to talk about the only way you can be a control freak and not upset your family and friends. <music> different places I could go with an opening like that but of course we are going to be talking about automation and control systems that's the backbone of what we do at Audio Insider and quite frankly it's the backbone of a modern connected smart home as well so it's important that we talk about this that you understand the features and benefits of it and also some of the different options out there because there is now for the first time ever a huge wide variety of options where you can get into the game for thirty dollars and you can get into the game for three hundred thousand dollars with such a wide gap it's important to understand what is what how it works and why you'd want one over the other. So automation or control systems are just like they sound. They automate your home or they control your home. One of the hardest things to do is get multiple brands of technology to work together simultaneously. And automation systems do a great job of that. They simplify complex processes, they create scenes, and they allow everyone in the home to have equal access to technology without necessarily having to know a bunch of stuff and be specifically trained on how to do things like turn on the theater or shut off the lights. Now, the problem is there's such a wide variety of different options out there. How do you begin? I'm going to start with the most basic options and I'm going to go up from there so you have a better idea of what's out there. The most basic option are going to be a simple voice control like Amazon Alexa, Google, Siri, Apple HomeKit, any of those ones are simplified control options. And they do what the big guys do but they just don't do it as complexly. Products like Amazon Alexa are a one-way communication. They don't have a super complex conversation with your electronics. You have to tell it the scenes you want, and if you don't, it's just not gonna work. The bigger systems are a lot more complex. They have built-in processors, there is two-way communication, and it will know if certain things have been executed the way it's wanting to be executed. So as an example, I can say, hey Alexa, turn on my smart TV in my living room. It can be whatever kind of TV you want and it will either turn on or it will not. With a bigger control system like a Crestron, it will actually send a two-way communication to that TV and it will acknowledge that it's been turned on. To me, the biggest separator is the level of investment you have in your home already. If you've got $100,000 worth of technology in your home, you're probably gonna want a more complex way of controlling it. If you've got a couple Sonos speakers, a Nest, and a couple other pieces, you don't really need to have that complex a control system to run it. And therefore, you don't need to spend the money to automate it because there's great options out there. As I mentioned, you can get started with a $30 Amazon Alexa dot. You simply open up their app, add all the equipment you want to control, create a scene, and then you say, Alexa, watch a movie. Alexa, good night. Alexa, turn on the TV in the living room. And it works. But when we get into complex lighting systems where we have a whole lot of smart devices, it makes sense to look at a more complex system to manage it all. And the analogy I use is this, you can only fit so much stuff in a little MacBook Air. If we're talking about a desktop, we have a lot more space, which means you have a lot more room for equipment, processing, cooling, and all that other stuff. It's very similar to how we control our homes as well. The bigger systems, your Crestrons, your Savants, your Control 4, all have a processor that plugs into your system. That processor is a computer, it's the brains of the system, and it's far more complex than the simple computer that's on the Amazon or Google devices. So when we're talking about five or six zones of lighting, real easy to control with an Amazon Alexa device. When we're talking about hundreds of zones of lighting, which is what we're seeing in a lot of these bigger complex houses, you can't control that with an Amazon Alexa. It simply can't keep up. So we start to look at that in terms of scalability. I like automation for a lot of reasons. It makes scenes really easy to do. One of the hardest things we have in our technology business is making multiple brands of stuff work together and play nicely, and it does a very, very good job of that. And it's software-based as well, so it's really easy to upgrade. It's not like in the old days where you're married to a programmer for life. A lot of this stuff is really easy to do, and can, done, can be done remotely as well. The drawback to those systems is a couple. Number one, the price point makes it prohibitive for a lot of people. And number two, it's a closed system. So as an example, if you start down the road because a security company put some Control 4 equipment in your house and suddenly you want to upgrade to a different system, you can't. 
you can pull the Control 4 processor out, but it's not necessarily going to play nicely with the Crestron switches. So that's the drawback. However, a lot of these systems will also incorporate, like we talked about, different brands. So if you're looking at a Control 4 experience, I'd recommend uh, Lutron light switches. I'd recommend things like Sonos, because if you switch out your brain or your processor, you're not going to be up the creek where it won't work with the rest of the stuff in your house. You have a flexible, open system. So I look forward to talking to you here again tomorrow for another day of technology. I want to thank you for talking to me today about automation and control systems. And just to remind you, if you've got any value from this video, if you've seen anything you'd like, please consider liking or subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video and commenting and telling your family and friends. For 30 Days of Technology, my name is Mike. I'll see you again here tomorrow.